Today we are doing a deep dive into Falcon Back's discography. That's correct, German pagan slash folk metal band, legends themselves, Falcon Back, and this was a Patreon request as well. It was requested by Neo, so thank you to that, and it gave me an excuse to dive deep into this band's discography and talk to you guys about it. So, let's talk about this band, all about Germanic, is that how you actually say the, the name Germ Germanic? That's the right word, Questy, Germanic. Uh, mythology and everything in between. Great subject matter, great vocals, and it's all by one man as well, which is a really hard name to pronounce, so let's try it. Vratias Vakius. It sounds like a spell. <laughs> sounds like I just put a curse on you. Let me know if I've pronounced it correct in the comments below. But yeah, it's all one man, which is insane. There's some guest musicians and stuff like that. But yeah, he's the mastermind behind it all. And they have a couple of albums and some demos to start off. So let's kick it off right at the beginning. So 1989 is where we start with the debut Have a Mile. And the first couple of debuts... um. First couple of demos, sorry, by this band. They're not really readily available. You can't really find them anywhere. It's like they've been hidden deep underground that no one can find it. No light shall shine upon these demos. You can't really find it anywhere. Not really. Um, it's like he just doesn't want people to listen to them. Uh, but some of the songs from them do appear on later releases. But yeah, the first couple, I think the first three demos, just you can't find online. Yeah, towards Solon's Golden Light and Tafana, the two other demo albums that are just, you just can't find. You can't find anywhere online. It's ridiculous, but it's uh, Falcon Back, so I'm sure they're good. But let's start with the first one we can actually listen to, 1995. I'm going to butcher this one. Laken Shender is the first demo, the proper one, the first one we can actually listen to, and oh boy, it's a good one. It has that classic black metal sounding atmosphere, unlike a lot of the other ones he has done. Um, and it's not static -y. you can actually hear everything perfectly clear, which I love. It has lots of like epic summoning-esque melodies, the synths and the stuff, feeling like a warrior riding through the plains. The title track has a very like medieval feel to it, um, kind of like obsequie, feeling like you're like a minstrel just dancing through the forest, it's so good. It does then blast off into the usual affair, the black metal affair, very heavy, very evil, but great use of synths, really good. Yeah, there's a lot of darker tone on the demo, so yeah, really enjoyed it, it's uh, one of the best in the catalogue in my opinion. In the same year, there was a 95 demo, which only had two songs. Uh, one of them included Galdarag, which would actually appear on the debut album. A bit more polished on the debut, but it's still just as good on the 95 demo. And yeah, those are the two releases from 95. Next up in 96, we have the final demo. And this is going to be really hard to pronounce. Pfft, you did this on purpose, didn't you? Skin af zverdi sol valtiva? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. They like the dots in the, in the album titles, which I love. What a mouthful that one is. Oh boy. Now this is some classic, static-filled, harsh black metal. Even more harsh than the one before it, which is very interesting. Don't know if this was recorded before that, but it certainly came out after. Uh, it came out in 96, whereas the other one came out in 95. But it, yeah, it definitely has a lot harsher tone, but I enjoy that because I like my Dark Throne, I like my Mutilation and Vlad Tepes and stuff like that. So I enjoy it. Some other people may be won't they maybe should stick to the 95 demo um both the albums from 95 because the nicer in tone but for me i love this one as well because the melodies within kind of make up for it so that's it the demo's out of the way let's get on with the debut which again the dot dot dots we have dot 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 n the med rica fara da 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 this one from the art you know it's gonna be fantastic like that just black and white, magnificent art, kind of reminding me of Blood, Fire, Death, and Bathory is a name to say with this band because they're very heavily inspired by them, and you could tell that in the music. The music is so Bathory worship, a lot of Hammerheart influences and Blood, Fire, Death, especially on this release. It's fantastic. It's let let's let's kick off with it. I mean, the production first of all way better than the the last couple. 
Um, Galdarang is on this one, and it's even better. Sounds even better. And then the starting off the album, the galloping of the horses, kind of reminded me of Bloodfire Death. Love the atmosphere, stuff like that. The song Heathen Pride, taking you right into like a tavern with your friends with meads in the air, clanging and clashing. <sighs> great song, that one. And there's great riffs too, like on Winter Night. That's such an underrated song. Love that one. The riffs on it are so good. So this is a, the harsher side of Falcon Back. Um, the more classic black metal side of it, but it still has those folky atmospheres, like I said. Medieval stuff, horses galloping, kind of like tavern chanting great stuff overall probably i know it's the debut that's probably my favorite overall uh i love it so much this and the demo oh, so damn juicy implore you everyone to check out the debut by this band it's not the fan favorite um i do think they probably become more established later on but i just something about the debut hits the nail on the head with that early black metal atmosphere which i hold dear and love so definitely love this one let's move on to 1998 with Magni Blandin okay <laughs> I like this okay in it uh, Megan Thierry <sighs> definitely butchered that this is the ship album the one with all the ships on this was the very first Falcon Back album I ever heard and as soon as I heard it I fell in love it's similar style to the debut bit less on the harsh black metal atmosphere more nicer melodies on here as well kind of reminds me of bands like Druk, Winter Phillips, stuff like that which I love they're some of my favorite bands of all time but they mix it so well on this album and this is one of the fan favorites if not the fan favorite just because they just do a mix of like the harsh screaming the singing and just the folk atmosphere so well on here it's unmatched. When Gallahorn will sound, what a way to kick off an album. You know, what a way to kick off an album. Has that melody and the drums kind of like building anticipation before it blasts off with the singing. Like you just want to be singing along with them on this song. One of the best songs I've ever done. And it kicks this album off in style. It's very Hammerheart-esque with the singing on this. Um, and you do want to sing along with most of the songs on here. It's so good. Mixing is great. The backing vocals and stuff kind of gives it like a grandiose feel to the whole album. You know what I mean? But yeah, like I said, similar sound to the debut. But the mixing, the harsh and the clean, it's more like a 50-50 split rather than a 70-30 like the debut was. So overall, I think it's flawless. And some people say it's the best one. And I can't argue with that. It'd be in my top three. So there you go. Next up, we have OK Nef Nefna? Tysvar Tear in 2003. I'm so glad I wrote them down because there's no way I'd remember any of this stuff. No way. This one is a bit, a bit of a departure. More cleans than harsh, but it still is in there. Um, but this is, this is a masterpiece of an album as well. Now, the first couple of albums by this band just knock it out of the park. And this is no exception. This is some people's favourites. It's probably the most underrated one. I think the only... Black Metal Shriek is in the opening song, which is nine minutes. Forgive, forgive me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that opening nine minute song is just phenomenal when the Black Metal Shrieks kick in. It's just hair raising. The Vanadis, the horns and the uplifting melody of it all. Such a great song. Another one of the best songs of the band. Another song which a lot of people don't talk about, Donut's Oak, is such a good song. It kind of feels like Blind Guardian-esque. You know what I mean? Kind of like somewhere far beyond like the Hobbit's tale uh, in the forest. Such a feeling like that. It does feel like you're on a campfire while that song plays and it brings you into the music and that's what you want with bands like this. And it delivers. 2005 with Heralding the Fireblade. Another fan favourite. Some people say this is the best. It's either this one or the ship one. <laughs> this one though. It it does have the perfect mix of sound. Like, I know the ship one is more on the black metal side of things, and I like it for that. This one is kind of like New Slave style, if you know what I mean. It's got that, it's still amazing, but it's a different kind of sound to the early two. And I love it for that. And it stands on its own. Kind of leans more into the folk kind of aspect, rather than the epic, um, you know, grandiose knights and stuff. 
aspect. It's more on the folk kind of side of it, but I love that. But there's still lots of shrieks within as well. And there's still some songs kind of carried over uh, into this album, but just made better as well. Like, Heralded has such an intense gallop to it. I love the gallop in that song. And A Forest Unknown is one of my favourites on the album. It's such an intense song, it kind of reminds you of, like, Hate Forest or something. You're like, am I listening to the right band? This is furious black metal. What is going on? Such a mix of sound. All of it works perfectly. The folk stuff, the heavy stuff, perfect combination. It is the perfect mix. And it is one of the best albums in the genre, in the folk pagan metal genre. It's one of the best. I love it. Can't praise it enough. Now on to 2011 for Tea Reader. Definitely said that wrong. This one is another departure. This one's probably the weakest for me personally. Still a great album. Still a great album. But it's a lot calmer and it's a lot more um, slower and methodical in the songwriting. That's what I'd say. Slower and methodical. It's back to Skyrim though for some drinking music. And hey, speaking of that, Skyrim came out in 2011 as well. Match made in heaven. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, instrumentals on this album. There's about three, if you include the bonus tracks. Um, yeah, there's about three instrumentals on here. Uh, it's not quite a long album. And the songs that are on, are on here, they're not as catchy or as memorable or as anything prior to this one. But they're still great. You know, they're still great songs. It's just, compared to what came before, they can't reach the heights. And Time Between Dog and Wolf is great. Again, with the slow, methodical approach. I do like that. I do like my Doom and stuff like that. But I just feel like... Yeah, I like uh, I like the other songs better. The folky um, minstrels sitting around the campfire. Or the furious, blasting black metal. Just, they do it better on other albums. So it is my weakest. But some people might say it's the best. And they're entitled to their own opinion. I still like this album quite a bit. It just, for me, falls short a little bit. So it's a great album. Just not their best. And that leads us to the final album of the band, Asa. This is from 2013, and the atmosphere takes over on this album. Oh my god, the atmosphere takes over. It feels like you're dragged into the artwork on the cover. I love it. One nitpick about this album is that the vocals, when he's singing clean, has a kind of distorted, distorted effect on it. Uh, tried listening to it. It's a bit of a distorted effect. When it's screaming, it doesn't. But when it's singing, it does. And it's kind of, it's kind of a bit strange. But it works with the actual atmosphere and the mood of the music anyway. So I can kind of forgive it for that. But overall, this album is, it's like over an hour long. But it doesn't feel like that. Like every song has its place, and every song just fits so well. And also, it has more intense songs than this one. So the stuff I complained about on the previous album, it's all kind of methodical, kind of mid-paced. This has ups, downs, has the minstrel-like songs, has really intense songs like Bruns and Embrace which is in English. Love that song, and one I can't pronounce, was it Wolf Wolfar Weeged? Yeah, sure, that song is ridiculous. This is a better mixture of sounds on this album. It has everything not crammed with instrumentals, you know, it, it has the perfect sound. It kind of reminds me back of heralding. It has that similar sound, so if you like that, you'd probably like this one. I'd say it's a great album for newcomers as well. It has a great production, great mix of the sound, and it's just all-encompassing. So, yeah, overall, I think it's a great final album. Uh, they're still active, uh, but there's been nothing since 2013, so this is the last place on this list. But yeah, overall, fantastic discography. Um, I like every single album, some more than others. Granted, my favourite is probably the debut. The debut is just unbeaten for me. I mean, that sound and style. The debut and the demo, I, I love them, but I like pretty much all the albums by Falcon Back. Which also translates to Runnels of the Falcons, which I forgot to say, the intro. But yeah, thank you for letting me do this deep dive, Neo. And it was good to go through Falcon Back's disco discography again. I love them. Um, for fans, of, again, like Winterfell, Druk, Aquilus, uh, Baffery, very heavily Baffery influenced bands like that, you'll get a kick out of it. A Moon Sorrow as well. If you like Moon Sorrow, you probably like Falcon Back. But yeah, overall, fantastic discography, and I hope they do more albums soon because Acer was fantastic. 
Let me know what you think of this band down below, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.